If you thought the weather was going to be quiet for the rest of November, you would be completely wrong as we now have Invest 99L in the Caribbean Sea, which is likely to become a hurricane over the next few days and could become a very rare November major hurricane in the Caribbean Sea. And we'll also be talking about the threat of a winter storm next week in parts of the United States. Let's begin with what's happening in the Caribbean Sea right now. And this right here is Invest 99L. This, this area of disorganized convection is expected to organize organize into likely tropical storm Sarah in just a couple of days as it moves to the west and then from there there is a pretty good chance this will at least impact Central America and Cuba but this is also very possibly going to be impacting Florida as we go into next week. The National Hurricane Center does agree that this will likely become our next tropical storm but also probably hurricane and has a 90% chance of formation in the Central and Western Caribbean Sea over the next five to seven days and unfortunately I do think that this has has a significant potential to become a major hurricane as it is near Central America and then eventually it'll move north and this could cause problems again for areas like Cuba and as well as Florida. And this is a closer view of Invest 99L. It is making a close pass right now to Jamaica. Overall, just a disorganized area of showers and thunderstorms. But as this moves a little bit further west over the next 48 hours, it is going to start to spin a lot more. And I think this will become our next tropical storm within the next 60 to 72 hours in the Caribbean Sea. There is concern that Invest 99L could become a powerful hurricane and potentially impact the United States by the middle of next week. So to look at the latest in terms of where this could be going in the intensity, we're going to look at the GEFS Ensemble members, which essentially is a group of different computer models all embedded into one graphic that show you both the intensity and potential track of this upcoming system. So this is by around Saturday. Notice a lot of the Ensemble members are still over in the Central Caribbean Sea. So again, this is not expected to really move much until Sunday or Monday. It's really going to be just sitting here in the Central or Western Caribbean Sea. Here's the biggest thing that we need to watch for over the weekend. If this does end up interacting with Central America and does not stay over the Caribbean Sea, this will end up being a weaker system as it moves north towards Cuba and as well as the Gulf of Mexico. That is a low chance of happening though as of right now. The bulk of the ensemble members keep this in the Caribbean Sea. Even though it's close to land, it's not close enough to really impact the intensity of the system. So if it stays even 50 or 100 miles to the east of land, this is going to have a very favorable environment with warm water temperatures and very low wind shear to rapidly intensify around Sunday. By the time we go into late Sunday into Monday, notice how these ensemble members spread out a lot. Some of them have this going more in the direction of Jamaica, which I don't think is going to happen. Most of them are still keeping it here in the Western Caribbean Sea, and some start to lift it a little bit to the north as we go into late Sunday night and eventually into early Monday morning. By the time we go into Monday afternoon and evening, notice how the bulk of the ensemble members eventually are are getting steered more to the north. That is because we are going to have a ridge that is in place just offshore of the Carolinas, which is going to steer this to the north. Most of the ensemble members right now have this going either towards western Cuba, similar to what Raphael did only about a week ago, and then most of them actually have it going through the Yucatan Pass, which is right between the Yucatan Peninsula and Cuba, which is a very favorable environment because it's all water there. So if this just stays over water, this could easily be a major hurricane entering the Gulf of Mexico. I also want to point out one thing here. If this is for some reason a Category 4 hurricane or stronger on November 19th, which is a possibility, it's not a high chance, but it is a possibility, that would be the latest Category 4 plus hurricane we've ever had on record. So I just want to throw that out there. This is obviously not a normal thing to happen in the middle of November. By the time we get closer to Tuesday, most of the ensemble members eventually have this turning in the direction of Florida. A couple of reasons why. We still have a ridge to the east, but also we have a trough that is going to be digging down into the south East. That is actually going to be a part of a cold blast and also a potential winter storm threat to the United States. So that's actually what's going to help steer this into Florida, which is, again, what I think is going to happen here is that we are going to have some sort of tropical storm or hurricane steering into Florida sometime around Tuesday or Wednesday of next week. Notice, again, most of the ensemble members pretty much consistent with this part of the Atlantic Ocean, either in the northern Caribbean Sea or in the southeastern Gulf of Mexico on Tuesday. And eventually by Wednesday, again, notice most of these computer models have this going right into Florida. There are very few of these members that have this not going into Florida. There are a couple of them that do crash this into the Yucatan Peninsula, which is an interesting trend. If that does happen, this could end up being a weaker system as it moves towards areas like Florida or even Cuba. Another thing I want to point out is if this does end up hitting Florida, which again, I think is trending towards happening. Again, it's not guaranteed at this point, but I do think it's about a 50% chance right now that we are going to be dealing with at least some impacts in Florida as we go into the middle of next week, even though we're still about seven days 
out. It's a pretty high confidence scenario right now with this particular steering system that we are going to have in place. But again, not a guarantee, but it is at least trending up that we're going to see that. If this does end up happening, one of the things that we're going to have to watch for is that trough that is again going to be dipping out of the United States all the way into the southeast United States. A cold frontal boundary will be moving towards Florida around the time of where this will be in the Caribbean Sea or the Gulf of Mexico around Tuesday and Wednesday. And in this case, this actually could be undergoing extra tropical transition as we go into Tuesday and Wednesday of next week. And if that happens, this could be similar to Milton, where it dumps a lot of rainfall in a short amount of time in parts of Florida. And it also could bring the potential for an elongated wind field that could also bring the potential for more uh, numerous power outages to parts of Florida. And just to reiterate, this is not guaranteed to hit Florida as of right now, but it is trending in the direction that this could be hitting Florida as we go into the middle of next week. More than anything, I'm just making sure that you're prepared. There's no reason to be panicking right now if you're in Florida. No reason to go, you know, panic shopping either. Again, we still got about six to seven days before any sort of impacts would be felt in Florida. But at this point, if you are in central or southern Florida, you definitely want to make sure that you are staying aware of the situation. This is the GEFS Ensemble members as well, just showing you a bunch of the lines and also intensity tracks here. Just want to kind of give you an idea that, again, there's still a relatively large spread here of where this tropical system could go. But again, the general consensus right now is that we'll likely have some sort of tropical system heading towards Cuba, and that would be mostly the western side of Cuba, and then eventually towards southern or either central Florida as we go into the middle of next week. And another reason why we are talking about this system in such high detail today is because the intensity of this could be relatively significant, especially for the middle of November. It is very rare to have a major hurricane in the month of November anywhere in the Atlantic Ocean, but this could also be a Category 4 hurricane and perhaps the latest Category 4 hurricane that we've ever seen on record in the Atlantic Ocean. There are a few models that bring this to a Category 4 hurricane. M the majority of the models right now have this at a Category 3 hurricane, and notice again, nothing's formed yet. So this is a pretty rare trend to see even this early on that many models are indicating that this could be a major hurricane as we go into this weekend and eventually into early next week. I also want to point out that these computer models do not go out far enough to show what this would be making landfall as on Tuesday or Wednesday if it ends up making landfall in Florida. However, I do think it'll weaken just a little bit as it approaches Florida with the potential for an extra tropical transition and also the, you know, the water temperatures being a little bit cooler up there in the southeastern Gulf of Mexico. But either way, this could still be a very impactful hurricane and we need to be watching this uh, really closely over the next few days, especially since there is a potential that this could be impacting Florida sometime in the middle of next week. Now I'm going to show you the GFS model, which is one computer model run, but this has been a pretty consistent model over the last few days when it comes to tracking this thing out. This is by Sunday morning. Notice how intense this hurricane is on the GFS model, down to a Category 4 and even borderline Category 5 hurricane in the Caribbean Sea, which again, would be historic if this happens, but again, this model's been pretty consistent with showing this in the Caribbean Sea. Here's the good news, at least for the United States. Again, notice how it does weaken as it moves to the north uh, as we go into the early portion of next week, but even then, again, Again, notice how, how close this is to Central America and the Yucatan Peninsula. There will be the potential for historic rainfall across areas like Central America if it does linger just offshore, and the potential for significant storm surge and high winds would all be in play. And eventually, as we go into Monday into Tuesday, the GFS model on the most recent run actually has this moving into the Yucatan Peninsula. This would be a good thing for the United States if this does happen, because if this does happen, it would be interacting with land, and it would eventually be a weaker system as it moves into the Gulf of Mexico, and there would be less opportunity for this to intensify with cooler water temperatures in the Gulf as we go into Tuesday and Wednesday of next week. The GFS model has it making landfall in southwest Florida as we go into late Wednesday. Again, this is still very, you know, early on. It's a deterministic model. Things could definitely change. But again, this is one model showing you that there's a pretty good chance this could be going towards Florida. Another thing I want to show you is that this will be, again, interacting with this steering system, and that is this big trough that is going to move across the central plains in the Midwest as we go into Tuesday into Wednesday. Day, and there will be a cold frontal boundary, so that's going to be able to bring this more towards areas like Tampa or Cape Coral if it is to make landfall in Florida during the middle portion of next week. I also want to point out that there is likely to be a winter storm back over in the upper Midwest and the northern plains as we go into Tuesday and Wednesday of next week, and then maybe even a lake effect snowmaker. And another thing that could happen is that we could see a Fujiwara effect occur as we go into the middle and end of next week. Now, again, this is very long term, but uh, this would be pretty rare. Again, the last time we had a Fuji 
Fujiwara effect take place, which is where two troughs merged together into one, was Hurricane Helene, which was only a few months ago, and that brought the historic rainfall. So it's a possibility here, but again, this is obviously still well over seven days out. Now, I do want to show you the GFS model run from six hours prior to the one I just showed you, because it does give you an idea that there's still a lot of uncertainty here. This is what it shows as we go into the weekend. It also still shows a pretty significant hurricane here in the Caribbean Sea. Again, until something forms, it's still very fluid situation right now with how intense this will be and where it'll be tracking. But this is the reason why I want to show you this. The GFS model six hours ago, again, shows that this goes right between the Yucatan Peninsula and Cuba, which would end up being a stronger hurricane as we go into Tuesday into Wednesday and eventually going towards Florida. And this also has a much more northerly track towards areas like Tampa and as well as the Big Bend of Florida. Again, it's a very fluid situation. We don't exactly know what's going to happen yet, but we need to watch this again very closely. Again, the smallest shift here over the next few days when it comes to the track in the Caribbean Sea could make a major difference between this being a very weak system and potentially one of the more powerful hurricanes we've ever seen in the month of November. Again, make sure you're subscribed to the channel. We'll keep you posted with the latest on this particular system.